Hello and welcome to the first Rotherham Advertiser Sports Chat podcast of the season. Looking back on Rotherham United's 3-0 away defeat at Aston Villa. Uh, it was a sobering day for the Millers on their first away day of the season, uh, following on from that um, rather embarrassing defeat to League 2 Morecambe in the Cup midweek. Joining me around the table to pick the bones out of this is Millers correspondent David Beddoes. Hello. And news editor Michael Upton. Hello. Gentlemen, uh, Dave, I'll start start with you first. Um Overall, 3-0 defeat, was that the, the correct result? Were Aston Villa three goals better than Rotherham on the day? I think there were probably at least three. There was an air of inevi- inevitability about it on Saturday. Um, and it unfolded and unfurled uh, you know, fairly quickly. Um, again, we saw Rotherham having decent spells of possession. In fact, I've noticed again we outdid the opposition for possession on about 52% this time. So plenty of the ball, but no penetration. You know, We can't even say that the Millers you know, missed chances because... We didn't create many really, and of course defensively um, we shipped three more, which is um, what, up to ten in three games now. I do think they closed the spaces down a little bit more than they did against uh, Morecambe, uh, but not nearly enough. Michael, uh, it's important to remember, isn't it? Aston Villa just come down from the Premier League, uh, kept a lot of their their, their squad from from that season. Uh, Roberto Di Matteo, the manager, won the Champions League. Obviously knows what he's doing in the dugout. Um, it's important to remember the calibre of teams that Rotherham are playing here, isn't it? Absolutely, I th- they were um, they were silky players, and I thought there was a lot of flair put out by Dimitar. It, it was like he decided he went to out football Rotherham. Um, and where I'm, what, what I was disappointed with, there wasn't enough scrap and fight about the Millers' midfield. I think if they had um, flown into a few tackles and uh, r- unruffled them a bit, and it's not like me to say that, then things might have worked out a little bit differently. As Dave said, there was plenty of uh, good possession, especially in the first 20 minutes before that disastrous mix-up for the first goal. And had there been a bit more penetration in those those early um, moments, and maybe a few crosses whipped in, then I think th- there might have been some joy for the likes of Ward. Dave, how important is it to remember that, that Alan Stubbs, the manager, is learning at this level? A lot of the players who've come together are still learning at this level. It might take a few formation changes, a few personnel changes to hit on the right formula. That's right, I mean he's got plenty of, uh, in forward areas, you know, plenty of play, pace and mobility about the team now. It's arranging them and uh, finding that best 11 that's going to be the trick going forward and try and pick up points as we're doing so. Um, I mean, it, it may be looking at, um, you know, playing it a little bit more defensively tomorrow night at Brighton. I think that's clear. I think this revival, you know, game points on the board has got to start from the back. And uh, we, we just need to be meaner and keener, a bit like we were at the back end of last season, and take it from there. Michael, uh, a lot of new faces on show, and for yourself, probably the first time you've seen them this season. Were there any any ones who stood out for you? Any ones who you thought Rotherham have got a decent a decent buy there? Well, the irony is that um, given what happened last season, we didn't see very much of Stephen Kelly, and I thought he had his moments on Saturday as well. Um, I think there's potential in Taylor. I think he's got uh, a bit about it. It's just a question of uh, end product there, really. Um, uh, aside from that, I think it's a, it's early days. Um, it's also difficult to to say that we've seen Danny Ward more than a handful of times actually leading the line. So I don't know whether or not he's going to be the main man, but I think a decent run, and he, he had enough about him on Saturday to think if he gets some decent service, he'll, he'll be one to, uh, to rely upon. Uh, unfortunately, apart from that, though, I thought yes, the standout performer was our old friend Lee Camp, who kept the score down again, didn't he, Dave? Yes, he did, yeah. I mean, that's stunning. What market has been perhaps saves of the season for the Open to Selco. Um, amazing save, but I mean, he was like a, a firing range at times, wasn't it, in the second half, and he, he couldn't fault him for any of the three goals. What disappointed me was that the fact that Villa were able to build confidence early on. They were, I mean, I wouldn't say they, they gifted the actual goal, but they gifted them the impetus to score that goal. And the disappointing thing about that goal was. Ultimately, it was it was like a championship or lower league goal. They weren't out football. They simply passed it across to the wing, whipped in a decent cross, and the big centre forward banged it in with his head. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's a there were a know-how and a skill level in the Villa side that millions and millions of pounds buys you. You know, got McCormack at 12 million. Guest did he cost six? They got a centre off James Chester, who just cost an eight million from is it West Brom? Mm. I mean, you know, Alan Stubbs were right when he spoke about an uneven playing field. Uh, but you can bridge that gap a little bit, as we've seen in the past. You know, we a bit of dogginess, and uh, you know that's what we need to start doing. Alan Stubbs said there wasn't enough belief, and I, I think he's right. I think they didn't um, 
Millers didn't bat themselves. But maybe they were intimidated by the fact that there were players with bigger price tags, bigger reputations, international caps behind them. And they didn't think, right, we'll throw ourselves into this. Well, that's, that's something they've got to get over very quickly, isn't it? Because a lot of championship clubs now have international players, Premier League players, uh, Premier League managers even, if we look at Newcastle and Villa and one or two others as well. Uh, that's something that, that, that Rotherham have got to get over, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a strip down effect. I mean, you know, against teams like Villa, we're sure they're going to figure it's, a, it's really about bonus points against clubs like that. It's the lesser sides, maybe, dare I say, Brentford this Saturday perhaps, maybe even less than Brighton tomorrow, that you can really, I suppose, properly judge progress and we need to get a couple of strikers in there. It will come down to leadership as well, though, because there are experienced and... and um, older aged players in that side, players like uh, Kelly and Camp and Smallwood have been around a long time, played a lot of games and they have to be responsible for helping some of the younger newer players to settle down and when they're in a scrap like that they need to set a market out. Uh, I always like Richie Smallwood, I think he, he adds something to his side, he's always a calming presence but perhaps without a Frecklington you haven't got someone who's got to lead by example in the same way and without an Arneson or a Morgan, say, you haven't got someone who's going to be shouting and bawling and draw, pulling people into line. That's where I worry we might be in trouble. We might have a bit of a soft centre and that you haven't got somebody grabbing players by the scruff of the neck and dragging them through. But there's still time, isn't there, Dave? I mean, as, as, we, as well as publicised, the transfer window doesn't close till the end of August. So Stubbs, Stubbs can still go out and find the players that he wants and this could be now... Now he's got in the creative flair players... Maybe someone with uh, a little bit more doggedness and roughness around the edges is, is on his shopping list. Absolutely. I think he'll be learning all the time, even at this late stage. We're what, two weeks ago before the transfer window could say, even it's, it's probably fluid, his thoughts. And remember what Michaels has touched on about the leaders and so on. He'll be seeing that. He might be seeing the lack of them. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. It, it might not just be someone's personality. It might be that someone like Kelly or Wood has that about them. That it's just not coming to the fore. If you're Stephen Kelly and Richard Wood, or possibly a, a Holford or even a Thorpe, who isn't in possession of, a, of their position, they're not, right, I'm the number one centre-half. If they don't feel confident in their own place in the side, maybe they won't feel confident about leading the side. I think once he gets to settle back four, or once he gets more of a settled side, maybe those personalities will come through, maybe that, that um, dynamism w- will be there. It's very easy to remember, isn't it, Dave, and you've touched on it already, that the, we're rather than pick up one point from the first two league games, concede a lot of goals, including the cup tie, um, it's important to remember that, that Rotherham season isn't going to be won and lost on the second game of the season away at Aston Villa, isn't it? No, it's, it's not. There's a lot of uh, teams still finding the way. Newcastle has been the prime example. Um, so, you know, you, you can't judge too soon, really, but we all know the disadvantages of a poor start. The, the, you know, the negativity can spread, it can spread to supporters, and then the managers and the players start to feel in it. And Rotherham don't need that. We've got to be upbeat. We know the importance of that in this division. And, um, you know, that, that, that's got to be the mantra. They have been defensively brittle so far, but let's not forget that this is a side who scored six goals so far. I think uh, Yates has uh, started well. Danny Ward's got his opened his account as well, and that'll give them confidence too. I think once you get your first goal as a striker, that'll give them confidence as well. So it's not like we're looking at 13 against and none in the in the forecast. So there's. Uh, Compared to some of the seasons we've had before, there's a bit more going on up front than we might have thought. And that's the positives, isn't it, of this? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things for Alan Subs to work on and he doesn't need us to tell him that, he, he'll know that. Uh, but there is some positives there as well. There is some things that he can hold on to and try and retain and build upon, isn't there? Such as the, 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 the flair and the creativity and the possession. Yeah, I mean, it's to, it's to be applauded the way he's trying to play. And, you know, if this style of football comes off, it's nice to go and watch, it's nice to pay and see, you're going to get value for That's money. what Tony Stewart wanted. Yeah, it is, it is, um, uh, but it's got to be done well and don't forget we're trying to do it against sides who've sort of got better quality players playing the same way, so it's a brave way, but you know, we, we need to be brave with, and it's got to be underpinned with some resilience. I don't think it was all doom and gloom, doom and gloom on Tatley, I have to say, I thought the first 20 minutes, myself and the fans around me were quite impressed by the way that the Millers kept hold of the ball, passed it around a bit and weren't, weren't intimidated, and they weren't, and, and this not be able to to have a cutting edge. I don't believe there would have been a greater cutting edge if they'd been hoofing the ball along to Danny Ward for the first 20 minutes. In much the same way, actually, as Stead was being used by Villa. He was very much their out ball and holding up quite a lot. So there, there were flashes, and even at 2-0 down, there was a, 
there was a, a bit of a rally, wasn't there, Dave? There were, there were flickers there were. of some players being prepared to try a few things. That's the same struggle. It's Wolves on the opening day, isn't it? The first half an hour, Rotherham were very good and then they seemed to fade out of the game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the story of this one, though, is one shot on target in the entire 90 minutes with Jake Forster Kasky just before half time. You know, we talk about being brave. It's about having a punt, having a shot. I mean, I think Villa probably weren't as good at the back as we made. Mm. They were just into panic a couple of times the ball went to the box. We didn't ask enough questions, and that was disappointing. And none of it happened fast enough. I wonder whether, despite what we said about Villa and their lack of confidence, whether or not the fact they had players who were slightly quicker at that level, that maybe that intimidates some of the Miller's players. Um, notably, in the second half, um, I saw a lot of uh, Anthony Ford in front of the mass ranks of the Millers and the number of times he got the ball must be two or three occasions he got the ball in a good position to whip it in and he, he checked back and brought Kelly into play or brought Fox into play instead of um, maybe getting the ball in early and putting those defenders who might be on under is, a bit of pressure is that early. part of the problem he's got to learn that quickly is that part of the problem to playing one up front though the fact that maybe there wasn't anyone to hit in the middle he looked up saw Danny Ward with five Villa defenders around him, so I had to come back out. Possibly. Is it, uh, is it about getting that support up to the front man if you as don't well? get the ball in early, even that one man hasn't got a chance of getting on the end of it. And I think moving the ball quickly, when they have the opportunity against that defence, once you've got the defenders turning, yes, there's a responsibility of the midfielders to get in there as well. But I think wingers are there to put crosses in as soon as they possibly can. Don't leave it to the fullback; it would be my advice. <laughs> right, gentlemen, we'll, uh, we'll round it up there and say thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for listening. Uh, remember the Match Day Centre on a Monday morning, every Monday after a Saturday game on the Rotherham Advertiser website. Everything you need to know about the game. There will also be a reduced Match Day Centre on Wednesday morning looking back at Tuesday night's game against Brighton. But remember, all the in-depth features and reaction is in your Rotherham Advertiser every Friday, 80p from shops. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. And thank you once again for listening.